In this CAD for Newbies Easter special, I'm going to show you how I created this horrible spiky dragon egg using Fusion 360 and how you can create your own. Let's get started. Welcome back to Makers Muse guys. So for this CAD for Newbies video, I wanted to do something special for Easter and we all know that eggs are synonymous with Easter, but I didn't want to just do another boring Easter egg, but I had a thought about like what would be the most evil egg shaped object I could create and I came up with this which I'm sort of called the evil egg, but basically I decided to call it a dragon egg <laughs> and This objects it looks very complicated It's very sharp because of how I've designed it, but it's actually not too difficult to 3d model So in this tutorial, I'm gonna go through step by step how I drew it and how you can create your own version So let's fire up a blank sketch so before I start, I'm going to create a new component. So new component, and I'm going to call it egg. Why not? And we want to create our egg sketch. So to get the profile of an egg, we want to use a revolve, which will give us a sort of side profile that we spin around to create a solid object. So what I used to create the bottle design in one of my previous videos. So let's go to create sketch and front view, and then hit L for line. And I'm going to make my egg 150 millimeters high. You'll notice as well that the line is not locked in space. Uh, so I want to make sure that's always vertical. So just right click it and then do uh, horizontal vertical. There we go. That little constraint right there. That means it's locked vertically. And that's how high our egg's going to be. So you can change this later, but it's just a good indication. This is how I did this one. Right. So we also need to give it a flat base. So a normal egg would have a round bottom, which is fine but for 3D printing really on FDM machines, you want a flat base like that. So we're gonna give our egg a flat base, hit L again, and let's draw it out from here. So overall, I would probably wanna make, that doesn't have to be too big. Let's maybe make it uh, 20. So that will be 40 when we pattern it around, a 40 millimeter diameter circle on the base to make sure it's flat and it's got a stable starting point for 3D printing. You notice as well, it was blue just then, but I just moved it to be horizontal and it automatically gave it a horizontal constraint, which is very handy. So we've got how wide our little base is and how high our egg will be. Now we need to draw the egg shape. So we're going to use a spline. I've used splines before and they're a very powerful way of creating a very nice looking organic shape. So let's go to sketch and spline. There we go. So we're gonna click out the top here, here, and down the bottom here, and then right click, okay. Right, that doesn't look like an egg. So from here, it's kind of uh, trial and error to make it look like an egg. I'm gonna move this top spline control point horizontally, so that means that when we, you can actually, it actually shows with the green where it's gonna continue on, which is very handy. Uh, this means that our top of the egg is gonna be flat, uh, sorry, not flat, uh, tangent, tangential to the top, so it's not gonna have a, a tip, although your egg may want, you may want a pointy tip on your egg, whatever. And we can move this point around as well to try to get a nice looking egg shape. So we're gonna now take this shape and revolve it. If you want to lock your spine in place, you can do so by hitting D and doing uh, dimensions between points, like so, so like 60 and from the bottom here, 60. And that means you can't accidentally move it but I may end up changing it anyway, depending on how our revolve looks. So stop sketch, and we've got our sketch for our egg. We've got our, uh, what we're gonna use to make our revolve. Okay, so we've got our egg profile drawn now. So we're going to eventually revolve this around to create our egg shape, but don't do it yet. Because I've found with Fusion, what we're doing to create something like this is lots of bodies that we're gonna then pattern around and I seem to find with Fusion that it's best to create the final revolve like last. So we create that revolve and then it stitches everything together. Otherwise we need to go through a lot of combined routines and it can fail sometimes. I find getting the revolve done last seems to be the most uh, foolproof way of creating this object. So with that in mind, we need to create our instance for the spikes or blocks or whatever you're gonna be adding to the, the outside of the shape. But before that, we need to make sure everything we draw is in our component. So right click and activate. That way, everything we draw will be in the feature tree of this component, which is what we want. So let's go to construct and plane along path. And I'm gonna select this path here. 
and we can put it wherever we like but keep in mind anything uh, too low will probably be difficult to print without supports so I'm gonna start kind of there doesn't really matter just wherever you like that's where our first instance is gonna be drawn right so select that and then we're gonna click create sketch so a really cool tip to make sure we're sketching on the edge of our egg profile is using the intersection uh, command in the sketch browser. So sketch and then project include, we want intersect. And intersect will let us select this curve and it puts a dot right where it intersects our plane. And this will update if we change our plane, it's very powerful. So now we know exactly where we draw our instance and that's exactly where we'll intersect our egg. Right, so I'm going to draw I drew these spikes here. Um, I'm going to draw a square this time. Let's go with that. So I'm going to do a sketch rectangle, three point rectangle, because I want to make it like this. So it's going to be sort of like a diamond, basically. So I'm going to move this around. I'm going to hit L to draw a line down here. So you notice that line is automatically black. It's made it automatically um, vertical. And I'm going to click that line and the corner of our object coincident. And similarly, I'm going to make these two coincident as well. So basically what, that, what that's done is this, oh, let me select it please. This object now can't be rotated anywhere. It, it's on 45 degrees because we've made it coincident on those two corners with here. Right click the line we just used to make it coincident and make it construction. So that's just used to construct this shape. You notice as well that it's not, um, <laughs> it's not a square, it's more of a rectangle. So I'm gonna select this line and this line holding shift, right click and equal. Now it is a perfect square. And dimension, I'm just gonna mention it across from here. Let's make it 16. 16, that looks pretty good. And how far I want it in, I'm not sure. I'm probably gonna end up changing it. So dimension D from here. Let's go with, yeah, let's go with seven. Okay, no, let's, let's go with more than that. Let's go with 12. Too much, 10. <laughs> 10, that'll do. Okay, stop sketch, righto. So we've got our object. Now I'm going to do extrude, select that profile. And what I'm gonna do is make it a diamond, basically. So I'm gonna go direction, symmetric, and pull it out and taper angle. Let's make that minus 30. What does that, that look like? That looks pretty cool. What about 45, is that too much? Probably a bit too much. Let's go minus 30 and pull it out a bit more. So it's actually a diamond. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Right. So I'm not sure how this is going to work, <laughs> um, but we'll find out. Looking at it now, it may need support as it builds up. So what I might do is go back to our sketch, edit sketch, and yeah, I'll just make it in the object seven like we had before. Stop sketch. Okay, so it's now on the edge like that. Sweet. So we've got our instance and you can make this whatever you like, but it's trial and error to find out what looks good. So now we want to try patterning this along our path, but you can't use the original path we created because it loops around on itself with these two lines here, which are what we use to make the revolve at the end. So what we're going to do instead is go to sketch and create another sketch front plane. And we're going to use project. So P, and we're just gonna copy that line. So we only want that curve for the outside of the egg and stop sketch. So now that's what we're gonna use for our pattern along path. Okay, so create pattern and pattern along path. Now this is the fun part. So we've got it set to bodies, select our object and our path, which is here. And oh, selected the wrong one, that's okay. Let's just hide that other sketch. So let's hide the original. So now we can only select the projected sketch we just made. And let's pull it out. So you notice it sort of starts floating off into space. That's because it's moving in an identical orientation. We want to make it path direction. So it rotates with our path like that. Oh, this is going to be crazy. Okay. And quantity, as much as you like. Let's try 20. 
What does that look like? Pretty crazy. Let's maybe try 16. Less crazy. Okay, let's try 16. All right. So we've got this linkage of these objects and it will be whatever you draw, like I did uh, these spikes here. But now we've got those objects, we can now rotationally pattern them around. So I'm not gonna union them together yet. I'm not gonna join them together as yet, but I'm going to go to create pattern, circular pattern, and just holding down shift to select all of them. And axis, we want this vertical one like that. And it does three by default, but we want way more than that. We want maybe 15, <laughs> 15, 16. Okay. Crazy, hey? So this is giving us an idea of what our egg is going to look like. Um, and now you can choose what you want to change if you want to change your object. So we can go back to where we sketched our instance and we can make that maybe 20 wide and maybe instead of seven deep, maybe 10. Okay, that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> Let's see how that looks. Pretty cool. Alrighty. Okay, so with everything done, we now wanna join it all together into our one crazy egg. So to do that, we wanna do our revolve. So the original sketch we drew is here and we're gonna do create revolve. So profile is, uh, it might be hard to select. You might have to hide a few things, but profile and the axis is here. Let it do its thing. It's gonna take a while and then it's going to hopefully add everything together. It's defaulted here to cut, which is not what we want. We want to join. And if you're happy with that, then hit okay. And if you are successful under the bodies option, there should only be one body, which is this egg. There shouldn't be anything else like that. And keep in mind, it needs to be 3D printable. So with this one, the bottom ones here might be borderline, but no, that's all right. You might want to remove those instances before you pattern them, change things like that. But basically that's the idea. So you can create a very complicated looking object using very simple shapes, a single instance of an object with the revolve and you just pattern it along the path and then spin it around the object to create something like that. So with this one, I printed it in the Poly Alchemy Scarlet Elixir and it's okay. I printed it on the Wanhao i3 with the uh, Flexion Extruder. And you can see where it's changed between the points. There's like banding along it, which is not ideal, but it's still pretty darn cool. It printed pretty well and it's very, very sharp. So keep that in mind if you end up doing spikes. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this Easter special edition of CAD for newbies using Fusion 360. And I'd love to see what you create. So be sure to tag me on Twitter at Makers Muse if you end up following this and making a crazy Easter egg, which could never possibly be laid. <laughs> um, and also let me know in the comments what uh, tutorials you'd like to see in future using Fusion and I'll put them in, uh, keep them in mind for my next video. Also a big thanks to my Patreons for helping me finally cross the threshold for being able to do these sort of videos. So a big thanks to you guys. You make this, these uh, videos possible. You help me keep doing this full time. And if this is your first time on Makers Music and you want to f see future 3D printing tips, tricks, reviews, CAD tutorials, stuff like this, hit that subscribe button. Helps us out a huge amount. And like, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys. Bye.